Now, when these clubs arrived on my doorstep last week, my immediate response was, I do not like the look of these irons. They are certainly not for me. You know, the old preconceived logic. Yeah, that kind of logic that I tell everybody not to adopt and go into things with an open mind, but really struggle to take heed of that advice myself at times. But then when you hit shots like that, you realize that luck should definitely be pushed to one side. Now, the first time I tried these irons with that negative mindset, well, this happened. Wow, that's a fastball speed as well. Oh my word. But of course, it wasn't just one shot that made me change my mind about these irons and I went on to play another round with my dad. Unfortunately, didn't have camera in hand and pretty much shot the lights out with an iron in hand that I pretty much hated the minute I took it out the wrapper. And that really does go to show one thing that preconceived ideas, well, they really should be eradicated from the mindset and uh, well, that includes myself. But the question is, what was it that made me change my mind and really consider a super game improvement iron as being so, so impressive went in my hands. The iron you just seen me hit was in fact a five iron. It's gone an incredibly long way and that's probably due to how strong the loft of that club is. But the ball flight also defied that loft. Right, 145 in. That ball flight is absolutely ridiculous and that is coming right down on the flag. Sit, sit which is another interesting element because we're playing downhill, downwind, and with that descent angle, it even looks as though we're obtaining some kind of stopping power on what are fairly firm greens as well. And out of interest, that was a nine iron. So I literally went from hating a set of irons to potentially loving a set of irons all after what was a couple of rounds of golf because I literally couldn't hit a bad shot with these things and we've come out this morning at Carden Park to just see how these things perform. But I suppose you want to know what these things are. It is another product from the Big Bertha 2023 lineup. It is their synonymous irons. It would be classed, no doubt, as a super game improvement iron. They're certainly super. They've got a lot of tungsten packed into them. They've got a lot of ability to launch the ball high with high ball speeds. The question is, can they stop on greens like we've just seen? Can they provide us with a little bit of control down the short end? And can they provide us with plenty of forgiveness throughout the set? My immediate answer would be from what I've seen so far, the answer to all those questions is a resounding yes. And the ball flight just continues to blow my mind. Now, Tungsten plays a big part in, well, quite a lot of irons right now in terms of what it helps you to achieve in terms of, uh, well, both forgiveness, ball speeds and high launching. And what they've done with this Big Bertha 23 lineup is added what they say is up to 11 grams of external tungsten weighting and up to 43 grams of internal tungsten weighting. Now, they make it visible in terms of, uh, if you can just see that, um, where it's packed in it'll be obviously very much um, generally in a, in a low position and back and that'll certainly help with the launch of these things because one other comment that will be perhaps passed on as a negative is just how strong these irons are in terms of the loft we always use the seven as the barometer and that's 27 degrees now all of a sudden people have got all kinds of problems with that but when you see the ball flight of what we've just seen with the five iron with the pitching wedge with the nine iron then you start to realize that why these things have to be so strongly lofted to counterbalance what they do in terms of their high launch otherwise all that would happen is the ball would go up and not travel forward so it's important that the balance is struck between the two and they do that extremely well and the ball flight is ridiculous compared to the loft the mass that you get in terms of a super game improvement iron is what we'll call them is obviously a super wide sole you've then got a super wide top line you've then got a, a sort of heel to toe whole mass of the club being fairly bulky and significant now i'm going to hit a five iron and at this end of the bag i'm more than comfortable with that i'm not overly keen on the offset that i'm seeing at address but everything else is just telling me that this thing is gonna it's doing everything 
I need to help me get that ball down there. And that ball just turned over from right to left. It's just how far that ball has traveled, which is the interesting bit, a really sort of okay strike. Five iron with a real towering ball flight and a ball speed that is zipped out there. So in the five iron, the bulk and mass really like. I'm now gonna switch up into a mid iron and just see how much help I'm getting, how much it affects that launch and how fast this thing is going off the club face with, let's try a seven iron. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf mega store, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the club's featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. So we'll try that seven iron, we're into the breeze, we're on a par five, we're gonna play between the two bunkers. And again, I'm seeing a club that's, uh, well, like I said, got a, a fair bit of mass to look down on. Interestingly enough, for this test, I'm using a graphite shaft, and you can certainly feel a sort of uh, a heavy weight in the head, which for me, it just, it, 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 it kind of leads me to want to swing the club just a little bit easier and let the club head do the work. That's pretty much exactly where we it wanting to be in terms of position, but again, just take a look at the ball flight and just how high that has risen. Don't forget, 27 degree seven iron I've just hit. That to me is if I was if I was hitting that blind and you looked at that ball flight, I'd be suggesting I've got an eight iron in hand. It is launching that high. So one preconceived idea we really need to eradicate from our heads is what loft is and just push it to one side and look at overall performance because if you've never been persuaded that loft has very little to do with launch angle, then this is proof that you're seeing right now in the shots that I'm hitting on the fairways with these really strongly lofted super game improvement Big Bertha 23 irons. But you've then got the issue down the short end of the bag, which is a concern for me on a personal level, and that's the fact that the bulk and mass that you see in these irons is okay in the mid irons and into the long irons, because if anything, it sort of breeds confidence. But then when you're talking about the short end of the bag, and I've got pitch and wedge in hand right now, very straightforward, 100 yard uphill into the breeze. And what I'm seeing now is a lot of bulk that suggests like clumbersome is the word I would sort of spring to mind. There's also that a great deal of offset again that slightly worries me as well. So now I'm thinking finesse is the last word I would associate with what I'm looking at right now and what I'm hoping to achieve. But maybe I'm overthinking it and it's just a case of luck. Just let the club head do its thing and get that ball going at the flag. As you can see, it still retains that super high ball flight, just slightly left of the flag, but really did exactly what it should do and what every other iron has done. And that's launched the ball incredibly high. And that's an interesting point because don't forget just how strong lofted this wedge is. Many of you will be having a heart attack right now when you see that you're gonna need perhaps two other wedges in your bag because of how strong this is. But the question is, based on that ball flight and the distance covered, I think yet again, these things defy the strength of loft. And then moving just a little bit closer to the green, that same situation, unfortunately, like I said, I think they do what's now known as an A wedge um, and a gap wedge, which are obviously a lot weaker lofted, but it allows you to extend it right the way through the range and having exactly the same clubs, which is always good. I only have the pitching wedge in hand, so for this type of shot, once again, not the kind of finesse that you would hope to have perhaps in hand. However, that's a nice little crisp knock, really, well, decent results to say the least. So it's kind of a debate with the short end of the bag. It's kind of like where it would really divide opinion on sort of what kind of golfer is comfortable with having the Big Bertha 23 irons with them. And that's, like I said, help down the long end with the bulk and mass. And are you prepared to sacrifice a little bit of finesse in that short end? And again, I've got this tendency to just everything down that left-hand side and how much that is down to me and how much is down to that closed face, I do not know. We all like something to blame. When the shots that I've hit bad with these irons, it has bit that one out to the left. Um, and again, I said it with all the kind of clubs that I've reviewed in this 
big Bertha range is that that offset to me just makes me question my alignment to the dress. It's a big deal for me. And like I said, the, the swing felt okay. The shot felt okay. It felt like it was going in a straight line rather than a sort of pull there. I don't know, but either way, that's the one concern that I have with this iron is just how much offset there is and how much it's not, it's not negating my fade. It's making me just close that club face down on the odd occasion and the bad miss is becoming out to the left. So it's the one negative amongst everything that I love about these clubs. There's still a little bit in there that I perhaps hate. Now, as with any review, we can't go on and not mention the looks of these things. And um, I don't know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a bit mixed in terms of the way I think it looks. The first thing that I notice is just how big they are. And I think that sort of sways me slightly. Like I said, that was my first negative thought towards them. I kind of like the colouring in the club. I always like a dark finish on the irons. It'd be interesting to see how they sort of stand up uh, over the test of time. And then there's this almost like carbon element that they've put in the uh, in the back side of it so from a shelf appeal perspective i would say okay without necessarily being the best job that callaway have done in terms of the way their irons looks but again it goes back to this big bertha lineup full stop they very much kept it in almost the theme that we've always seen and come accustomed to almost like i said a bit of a retro feel to it all and for people who've played Big Bertha irons or any of that range for a number of years. This is a very familiar look that you'll be comfortable with. Maybe updated with that darker finish, which I think is a good addition. Anyway, I'm going to hit another five iron, which is probably arguably the my favourite club within this lineup. And again, just a little tug down that left hand side. We'll get away with that one because we've got some room down there, but. It is my favourite club for the reason as to why these clubs are actually so good. And that is, this is so damn powerful and so easy to hit and so high launching. So from a five irons perspective, which is arguably the long end of the bag and the toughest part, that's an absolute godsend. And for many, that translates right throughout the set and they're really going to enjoy the help that each of those irons gives. For me, once it starts to get down to the shorter end of the bag, that cumbersome profile just becomes a little bit too bulky for me on a personal level, but I can fully appreciate why it might work for others. All I can say is Big Bertha 23 for me has been a hugely successful product launch from Callaway. It's very much aimed at a specific golfer and it does exactly what you would want it to do for that category of player and these super game improvement irons are no different and no exception to everything else they've done so far in this lineup right that's me done no more i can add to that let me know if you've tried these things let me know if they are on your agenda to try and uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow night